Welcome back to another episode of the Iron Roots Podcast brought to you by Play. I'm your host, Zach Evanesh, and in today's episode, I'm bringing you back in time to a man behind the method that helped me get to some of my strongest and most jacked times ever. This is Play's Iron Roots, a podcast dedicated to uncovering the strength legends, the training methods, and the stories around physical culture and iron history. I'm your host, Zach Evanesh. Grab yourself a protein shake, chalk up, and prepare to travel back in time to some of the most awe-inspiring stories of iron history. It's go time. Okay, guys, so in this episode, I'm talking to you about something called the heavy duty method brought to you by this guy, Mike Menser. So if you're listening to us, you're going to want to check out the video over at play.pro. Now, Mike Menser was a bodybuilder in the 70s and the early 80s. He was one of the early day students of Arthur Jones that came from that Nautilus era, and his heavy duty method was all about high intensity training, heavy lifting, and very, very, very low volume. In fact, there were some articles that I had read where Mike claimed to train legs once every 21 days. Now, who knows how true things were in the magazines back in the 70s and early 80s, but that was his claim. Now, he got away from the bodybuilding competitive scene in the early 80s after he had a very controversial loss to Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Mr. Olympia. After that, I'm not sure how much he competed. I believe it was maybe once or twice more, but I remember looking in the magazines and seeing Mike Menser in the late 80s saying to myself, man, that dude looks like he is carved from stone. It was the beginning of me actually kind of having this thought of, not just looking like you looking strong, but actually being strong. And in some of the magazines and books I've come across with Mike, I see him utilizing machines, I see him utilizing free weights, but I also saw him utilizing some unique exercises that I didn't see any other bodybuilders doing, such as split jerks, pressing weight, you know, clean and jerking weights over the head, rack pulls, squatting inside of a squat rack, but doing the uh, limited range of motion, doing heavy negatives. And the heavy duty method was all about not just training hard, but training with such intensity that you would go until you basically couldn't move the body anymore. So if he was doing lat pull downs, he would go until he hit concentric failure. Then he'd have two training partners pull the bar down and he would fight the eccentric. And he would continue that until he could no longer even hold on to the lat pull down bar. But when his methods really hit me the most was back in the early mid 90s when he began training Dorian Yates, who became a six time Mr. Olympia. And back around that mid 90s, Flex Magazine showed a photo separating one year of Dorian Yates from his previous year. And Doran Yates was called the shadow because he would disappear into his gym out in uh, Birmingham, England, I believe. And uh, it was called Temple Street Gym. And it was a dungeon. It reminded me of Diamond Gym. And the before and after photo that separated Dorian from this one year, he said, was highly because of the methods of Mike Menser. His training went to such a low volume, yet a high intensity, that it convinced me to train in a much different fashion. I completely changed the volume of work I did. I amplified the amount of rest I took, and I'm gonna break down how I train, which was brought to you basically by the methods of Mike Menser. I copied what Dorian Yates did, minus the steroids. (laughs) So let me break it down, guys. Before I got into the training of this high intensity, I was doing a two days on, one day off, power bodybuilding workout. I was done with my bodybuilding days and I was really looking at the bodybuilding methods of guys from the golden era and even the classical era. They were strong. They didn't just, you know, look strong. They were strong. Guys like John Grimmick, Dave Draper, even a little bit of Arnold and Franco. But training two days on, one day off, I always felt like day one was great 
and I felt like day two was a B plus, right? I felt like I, I was just lagging a little bit of energy. So when I saw what Dorian Yates was doing is he was taking a day off after every workout. And if it was a lower body day, I read that he was taking two days off. So I split up my body in four ways. And as much as this was a bodybuilding split, I got extremely strong and I was actually coaching wrestling and wrestling at the time. And I remember entering an open college wrestling tournament with just having high school wrestling experience and giving a pretty good battle to a division one wrestler. That being said, I just didn't have the skills, but I had the strength. So coming from bodybuilding training, you would think it was totally wrong. I did chest and buys on day one. Day two was off. Day three was leg day. Then I took two days off. Uh, then that third workout was shoulders, triceps, day off. Fourth workout was just back training. And I remember that summer putting on so much size and strength, squatting 455, benching at 300, dumbbell benching the 130s, one arm rowing the 150s. And every single workout was an A+. Plus. My energy was through the roof. And when we break down that four-way split, it comes down to training the body across nine days. Now, I wouldn't recommend that system of training for somebody who's in athletics, who's training for sport performance. But what I want the takeaway to be from this is how I took a low volume approach to training. I maximized the lifestyle, the rest, the nutrition, and in turn, I maximized my gains. So my main lift, let's say it was a squat, I would warm up and build up and hit two heavy sets or sometimes one all out set. I didn't do all the negatives and the forced reps. I just got one or two all out sets and was done. And my friend, Marty Gallagher, who was the coach of Kirk Karwaski, one of the most prolific and feared powerlifters ever, that was a method he used to help build up Kirk's squat, bench, and deadlift. He'd build up to an all-out top set of a squat, bench, or deadlift and be done. Sometimes he said Kirk would build up to the best squat, best set of squats, and then leave. They called it squat and leave. And it makes you think or consider how much training are you doing individually or if you're a coach, here's where I want you to think about this. Are you overtraining your athletes? Now we could argue and say there's no such thing as overtraining because we're talking about their lifestyle. They're not sleeping enough. They're not eating enough. But I remember a college program wanted me to train a certain team four days a week. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm training this, these wrestlers three days a week in the off season. And these guys are tough as nails. Now I'm going to train a team that's not so much known for being tough. Are they going to be able to recover or mentally handle the four days a week of training? I thought to myself, definitely not. There's a huge mental aspect to this style of training that when you train one day, take off the next day, you're really fired up to come back to the gym. Whereas if you're doing a high volume of training, you start saying to yourself, well, I'm coming back tomorrow, so let me just stop here on Monday. I'm coming back tomorrow on Tuesday. The methods, the heavy duty methods can slightly be applied to strength and conditioning. And then of course, the recovery, the recuperative methods are where we really want to start reconsidering our training methods. The intensity methods of Mike Menser, negatives, forced reps, then partial reps, that's going to be a little bit too much for athletes. If you're trying to put on size and strength, I think you can do the forced reps. You can do some of those negatives. Uh, Cal Dietz is utilizing negatives in his triphasic training. A lot of this stuff was starting to get implemented with these bodybuilders like Mike Menser, who were training heavy to put on size. And as you can see from this photo, guys, there's a difference in his physique from the heavy training compared to the physiques of the bodybuilders who did a lot of the high rep pump up training. In fact, there's a big difference in the guys in the 70s, late 60s, compared to what we started seeing in the mid 80s. The guys in the mid 80s started getting into the high rep pump up training. 
guys in the late 60s and 70s were deadlifting and doing clean and press and rack pulls and heavy squats. And that's why they were built the way we were built. So what can we get as a takeaway from the heavy duty method? The rest and recovery. I want you to reconsider your training. Think about how hard you're training, how frequently you're training. Marty Gallagher even told me about a group of guys he's training now. Busy, working men, family men. They get together one day a week on Sunday and they do a squat bench deadlift workout. They work up to a heavy squat. They work up to a heavy bench or a heavy overhead press. And then they work up to a quality deadlift. They don't kill the deadlift. And he said every week, these guys are getting stronger. These guys are getting better. So it's not so much uh, how often you're training or how much you're doing. It's the quality of it. And the heavy duty method was all about intense training, but dialing in the recovery. And that was a big reason why I got to my strongest and most jacked. And I'm going to leave you with this quote. This was a great one. I'm out mountain biking with my buddies, wearing a tank top. And they said, how big do you want to get? You're huge. And of course, when your friends are not huge, they think you're huge. And I said, I don't know, guys. I'm just training hard and I love training hard. But by training that every other day and then two days off after a leg workout, I put on the most size and strength in the least amount of time that I ever have in my life. And that's it, guys, for this episode of the Iron Roots Podcast, talking to you about the heavy-duty method from Mike Menser. Thank you for supporting the Iron Roots Podcast, brought to you by Play. To see this episode and all the other educational resources brought to you by Play, go to play.pro, P-L-A-E dot pro. You're going to love it, and we'll see you next time.